fellas, today's video has literally been requested. I don't even want to know how many times. I cannot count the amount of DMs that I get on Instagram or the amount of private messages I get on Twitter. They're all asking about the exact same thing. And oh, can you film a video? on PSA cards. So guys, today is officially the day, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna literally go through my Pokemon card collection, which is like my big giant binders full of ultra rare cards, like these are full of my rarest cards I've got in my collection, and I'm gonna attempt to pick out, I think the amount that I want to select is about 15 to 20, 20 maximum, um, of ultra rare cards that I'm gonna send into PSA and they're gonna grade. So while I back up a little bit, if you don't know what a PSA card is exactly, it's this bad boy right here. Um, basically you send in your Pokemon card to a company called PSA, they're over in America and they're like pretty hard to get a hold of. So what I'm doing personally because I don't live in America and I don't really have the contact details to send cards to PSA, I'm sending my cards to a guy in America, the TCA gaming guy that sends me all my mystery boxes, but I'm gonna send my like individual cards to him, then he's gonna bundle them up and then he's gonna send them to PSA for me, get them graded and then he'll send the PSA cards back to me and I thought when we get the cards back we'll do another opening and see what grade all our cards got. So obviously you want to send a card in and you want to send it in hoping it gets a gem min 10 because if it gets a 10 out of 10 rating it's gonna sell for the most on eBay. And the thing is with PSA cards right, Say your card that you send in is worth $100 without being graded, once you send it into PSA, when it comes back, usually it goes up by like a lot of money, and sometimes it can come back if it's 10 out of 10, it can be worth like 500 bucks. So yeah, it like goes up a lot in value, but it really depends on the card. So, I thought today, there's a lot of thought that has to go into what cards you're going to send into PSA, um, and especially for me, like this is my first ever time doing it, so I wanted to be on camera and show you guys what I'm going to select, it's a huge task, so a couple of things I guess you want to think about is A, is the card good quality? Is it going to get a 10 out of 10? Or is it going to get a close to that, like a 9 or a 10, or an 8 or a 7? Um, obviously though, we're going for a gem mint 10, that's, that's what we want. Then I guess B is, is that card going to go up a lot of money when you send it in? You don't want to send a card in that's worth 20 bucks that if it gets a 10 out of 10 PSA and you pay all that money to get it graded, it only goes up eight bucks in value. Like the only resale with that is 28. You want to send in cards that will shoot up in price if they get a good grade. And I think last but not least, it's important to also keep some of your rare cards because I've heard so many disaster stories of people that have attempted to send cards to PSA or they found websites online that will send your cards into PSA and they've been robbed. Like they've sent the cards into the website and people have stolen the cards or the mailman knows that there's like cards in the PSA envelope and steals all of them. So I've got to be careful not to send all of my, like 20 of my rarest ever cards in, in case they all get stolen. Like that's the worst case scenario. Let's hope that doesn't happen, but it's important to keep these things in mind. So the very first thing I think we'll do is uh, I want to have a look at my PSA collection. I know a lot of you guys are keen to see that as well, but I just want to have a look at this and make sure we know what cards they've already got graded so we don't double up. Let's have a look at my PSA card collection so far. So I gotta say, at the moment, my PSA card collection isn't too strong. I mean, it's pretty good, but it's definitely nowhere near where I'd want it to be. So that's why today's video is really important to pick out cards to grow this collection into something really, really iconic. But we've got a couple of these bad boys right here. Now, I don't think I'd send in any of these sealed up baggy sort of promos just because it's really, really risky. If you have a look at it here, these two cards are both in gem mint condition, but the bag wasn't in great condition. So they both got only seven out of 10. Now, knowing me, I'd probably ruin the bag or something. So I don't reckon I'd send any of those in. And I'm not sure if they even grade those anymore, but interesting to have my collection nevertheless. Individual cards though, we've got none other than the 1999 Shadowless Gyarados, which looks fantastic. Then we've also got the Black Star Mew, Aridos E-Series, Verizion Full Art. You can have a look at the grades up the top in the red as well. Usually a 9 or a 10 or an 8. I mean, they're all, that's a fantastic sort of grade in between there. When you get below an 8, you're like, it reset will probably dips a little bit. We've got Torterra Level X, really iconic, secret rare, unlisted leaf energy, Nido King from the good old base set, then we've also got the unlisted leaf energy once again, Mega Venusaur Full Art EX, Charizard Shadowless from the base set. Now, it doesn't matter that's a five, just because it is shadowless, and that's like super awesome. Then a card I absolutely love, and I think you guys do as well, it's a Charizard, Dark Charizard, first edition, nine out of 10, like Team Rocket series, yeah, Dark Charizard looks great. Full Art Charizard EX Gem Mint 10. 
Uh, then we've first edition Unlisted Leaf Energy, that's iconic as well. A 2002 McDonald's uh, E-Series Squirtle right here. I think the whole looks amazing. One of the oldest PSA cards I have in my collection, like I've had that for years. Then we've got that Secret Red Pikachu as well. Shining first edition Neo Gyarados. And then Crystal Nido King to finish off my collection. All right, that's pretty interesting. I think the main highlight of a card that I will double up on, I don't really care, is gonna be that base set Charizard. I do have the Shadowless in here. Obviously, I don't have another Shadowless one, so that's no big deal, but I do wanna get graded a regular version. Um, And yeah, I think we better select some of those. But actually, before we start as well, uh, I told my friend RJ, the kid that I gave the Rainbow Rare Charizard to, if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it below. Um, I told him I was getting a few cards PSA graded, and because he's such a legend, he was in the video, uh, he's like, oh, I've got a few cards I want to get graded, literally my best cards in my collection. And I was like, you know what, give them to me. And uh, I think TCA Gaming said I could send in like a few cards. So I was like, you know what, you can take some of my slots up. And RJ gave me, dude, he literally gave me some of the rarest cards ever to get graded. So this is what RJ's chosen for me to send in for him to get graded. So no surprises here, RJ did end up putting in his Rainbow Rare Charizard. Then he also had a base set Charizard. This man's the biggest Charizard fan of all time. Also a Rainbow Rare Gyarados, Fuller Golden Necrozma, a uh, Secret Rare Tank Mewtwo, inspired by yours truly because I love that card. Then he also had his Full Art Charizard, Mega Charizard, Delta Species Charizard, and his Deoxys Full Art, and his regular Tag Team Charizard GX. The man has set the stage, like dude, literally RJ's gone. You know what, Endo? Here's the bar of crazy rare cards I'm sending in, try and beat that. Um, and I think the craziest part is, if we have a look at the Reshiram and Charizard Rainbow Rare, right? The resale on just this card alone that I gave him was $400 or something. Let's see what that will resale if it gets a 10 out of 10 from PSA. This card, the Rainbow Rare Charizard and uh, Reshiram card, is currently reselling as a card by itself. It is recently sold for $440, and then a PSA 10 version of this, $1,000 and over easily it's selling for. But hardly anyone is selling a PSA 10 version of this because no, A, no one has the card, and B, no one's sending it into PSA. I'm about to make RJ a millionaire over here. So yeah, if my boy gets a 10 out of 10 on this card, he's made over a thousand bucks on just that easily. All right, this is so interesting, dude. All right, so what am I gonna send in? Let's select what uh, we should send in as a channel. And I'm so excited because I really wanna do that video where like we get all our returns back and we see what we got. So I guess it's time to have a look through my massive binder of like gold cards and pick out some of the bad boys that we want. I mean, I've got like pages of these ultra rares, but I think we should try and select the rarest of the rare, and that's what I'm gonna send in. I mean, there's like trainer rares as well, but I just get a feeling that they're not gonna, they're not gonna resell as much as maybe a Pokemon Center exclusive uh, full art card. And the colors as well, they look so good, but again, you can't go off colors, you gotta go off like, I don't know, rarity of release. Oh, look at that, we got the regular Charizard right there, the full art Charizard, but seeing as I've already got a Gem Mint 10 version of this bad boy right here, all sealed up, we won't need that one, so I can leave that in the binder. Alrighty guys, so uh, I think I've selected out a good chunk of, uh, these are all my cards that I reckon I want to send into PSA. But I want to weasel this collection down because I think this is about 40 cards I've picked out. And I guess I'll answer the question now because I've got a feeling everyone's going to be like, why don't you just send in 40 cards? I mean, A, I don't want to lose 40 cards if I lose all this in one, like, mailing session. But B, it actually costs a lot of money to send these cards in and get graded. So, apparently if you send it in, it gets like a gem mid 10, crazy good condition. PSA charge a lot of money to seal it up in their little envelope. And... It'll cost me a fortune if I do like 40 cards plus RJ's cards, it's gonna cost me a lot of money. So I gotta try and limit the amount I'm sending in. As I said, total, I'd probably wanna send maximum t uh, 20 cards of my own plus RJ's. So let's try and work out what I wanna send in. All right, so first up here, I've got a first edition Shadowless Venusaur, I think. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. The Shadowless Venusaur has some damage up the top on the hollow foil part of the card. And I honestly believe that this card is worth more without the grading um, than it would be if it got graded. Because I got a feeling if this was graded, it wouldn't get the greatest of score just because of that damage on the top part of the foil. So as much as it pains me to say, I honestly believe this one is a stay-at-home card. So I'll leave that first edition Shadowless Venusaur. Um, 
yeah, because I just don't think I'd get a crazy good grade and wouldn't be worth the uh, money I'd have to pay to get it done. Now, I want to do, I'm going to do this, my regular sort of base set holo blast toys. It's already a $60 holo, and if it gets like PSA 10, dude, not bad at all. If we get, oh my gosh. If we get a uh, regular, like, good 10 out of 10 on this bad boy right here, they can sell for up to 430 bucks. All right, sick. Dude, I reckon we might make a fair bit of money if we get all 10 out of 10s. I haven't done anything crazy. I mean, these should. The same with the Venusaur. I've got another Venusaur right here that we pulled in that same video. I think we should try and get the collection because I do have a Charizard as well I want to send in. So that Charizard that we pulled in the base set video as well, I'm going to send that bad boy in too. And obviously, this sells for a stupid amount if it gets a 10 out of 10. Um, I don't know. I think it'd probably be like $500, $600. So we'll send that one in too. Alright, so so far we've got three cards right here. Blastoise, Venusaur, and Charizard Hollows from the base set. I think that's an iconic start to the video. Um, and that's definitely what I want to send in. Now, I won't double up. I've got another Venusaur, I mean, another Blastoise that I've selected right here. I mean, it's great condition. I think it might even get a 10 out of 10, but I don't want to double up. I just want to make every single card count. So I'm going to put this one to a leaf at home. Okay, so next up here, I want to do a couple of uh, my Japanese full arts that I absolutely love and I think would make iconic PSA rated cards. So I'm going to do my Stained Glass Window Full Art Zapdos Articuno on Moltres card. Um, I think that's only just going to shoot up in value. Everyone loves the card, especially with the English set coming out. It should be a hot seller. So my Secret Rare Stained Glass Window card is going to be my fourth uh, selection to go to PSA. I don't see any damage on it, I bought it from a seller, so I mean definitely on chance it could get a 10 out of 10. I think as well I want to send in my cosplay uh, Gyarados Pikachu card right here. These are only shooting up in value, I think the resale on one of those Gyarados Pikachu cosplay cards at the moment is sitting anywhere between like $200 to $350. So a PSA 10 version of that would be fantastic, so that's my fifth choice. Now this is an iconic Pikachu, it literally sells for as much as a Rainbow Ray Charizard, and I couldn't even imagine the price if it does end up getting a PSA 10, it'd just be a stupid amount of money, so obviously I think this deserves it as well, seeing it's an anniversary release only Japanese full up promo. It's the, the artwork is sick too, I, I need that in a PSA version. I think as well it's probably important to note at this point, this is probably a bit more for my collection uh, and not so much on the resale side. I think if I was going purely resale I'd be like just doing all Charizard base sets that I have because I got four of them. But for me personally I want to get a good variety for my collection so I'm doing different cards. Now this is an interesting one, Rainbow Rare, Pikachu and Zekrom. I'm actually not going to submit this even though I was really tossing up whether I wanted to submit it, I don't think I will because I was looking through a couple of other cards I want to send in and I thought I'd rather send in those than this one right here. So. I'm keeping that one at home, and that one's going to be a stay at home. Now, two iconic cards that I wanted to send in, they're like super sought after as well, ridiculously rare, Japanese full art, rainbow rare, shiny and regular, Charizard card. So if you don't know, the Charizard was all the rage about in December of last year, and uh, the rainbow rare version's been all the rage forever, and both of these are just going to go crazy in value when they do get PSA graded as well. And I think they're very, very good condition, and I couldn't even imagine just showing someone a PSA 10 version of that, or a PSA 10 version of that as well, it would be iconic. So I want to do both of my Charizards. Now obviously, I'm not even going to give you a reasoning behind it. I hope if you've been watching my channel long enough, you understand why I'd send this in. Full Art Silver Dialga right here. It's just iconic in every way possible. I think it's an absolutely beautiful card, and I'd love to get it graded. I really do think... I can't see any errors. This should be a 10 out of 10 as well. So I'll put that one there, and the exact same thing goes for Ultra Necrozma. We did a whole series for that. I managed to find it in the end. Gold cards will forever just hold their value really well. So I want to send in this one. It's already an $150 card without being graded, so it needs to be graded. I also will be sending in my Dark Blast toys uh, right here. First edition from Team Rocket. Everyone shot me a DM on Instagram after I did that video, my Team Rocket opening. They're like, Endo, I want to buy it off you. Endo, I want to buy it off you to get it graded. Because apparently this is one card that the resale on a first edition Holo Team Rocket Blast toys is actually like, it's pretty good. But apparently if you get this thing graded, it skyrockets into price and uh, that's where the real money is. So yeah, I'll be putting that one right there as usual. Now a card that I've wrestled with for a while but I don't think I'm going to send in is a uh, Secret Rare Mewtwo EX Fuller card. It's iconic, it's great, it's gold, it looks fantastic, but again, I don't want to waste a slot with this one. I feel like this is a stay at home card. Maybe next time when we do another round of PSA cards, but yeah, we'll save that one for next time. 
Now, I do want to copy RJ and do the exact same thing he did. I'm going to send in my full art Reshiram and Charizard GX and regular GX just so I have a collection. I mean, I can put those two great looking full arts next to my ripped version of the Rainbow Rare one. But yeah, I thought I'd do the same thing too because they both, they're just going to go up in value. Actually, guys, you know what? Since I'm sending in, um, I'm going to send in that Gyarados cosplay card, I think I might as well send in my Magikarp Pikachu cosplay as well. So then I'm going to take that up as another slot. And then I'm also going to send in my X and Y Charizard uh, cosplay cards too. And they're sleeved in the actual sleeves as well. I don't, they, I don't think they do great them in the sleeves, but... I think four Pikachu cosplay cards, because they're all very, very expensive as they are. I can only see them going up and barely being a Pikachu card. Now that Charizard's like the officially most popular Pokemon of all time, uh, having a Pikachu, the mascot of the franchise, cosplaying as Charizard, I do believe that's a good investment. So I'm going to give both of my X and Y full of Charizards to PSA as well. Now, I don't know how many of you guys actually remember, but my first ever Search For series was Search For The Gold. And Search For The Gold led us to find both Reshiram and Zekrom, gold, full art, secret rares, probably the most treasured Pokemon cards in my collection, like hands down, and hence I'm gonna get both of them graded. I mean, they've been through a rough mission, like I remember filming videos with these, filming shots, uh, thumbnails, so these have been handled a lot. But again, I didn't handle them in a way that's going to crazy do- Like, I presume these are going to get an 8 or a 9. Really doubt they're a Gym Mint 10, but I want to send them in nevertheless because they have personal value to me. So these are two more I'm going to add to the collection. Two cards I would die to get graded because they already- Both of these sell for $1,000 each. This is like $2,000 worth of cards I'm holding up right now. Now, the problem with these is both of these are so rare, and they've got such a crazy story behind them, and this is why they're worth 1000 bucks each. You can't grade them. There's certain cards that PSA look at and go, no, that's just too risky. Like, we don't know if that's real, fake, you could have frauded that. So, two cards right here that I'm dying to get graded is my Collector Charizard and my 4 position only Arbok. But the problem with those cards are, PSA won't grade them. So, I'm going to have to keep them in a the top loader and never open them ever again. But, yeah, that's unfortunate because I reckon a PSA graded either one of those may get up to like 5 grand, something crazy. Anyway, I do think we have a stupid amount of money with that one right here. And the final card that I do want to get graded is uh, my first edition Crystal Celebi from Aquapolis e-reader card right here. It's iconic. I mean, the man TCA sent it in to me, and I'd love to get that graded. Like, just think about a full crystal. It would go so perfectly with my Crystal King. So yeah, I want to get that done. And this first edition as well, which I do believe will shoot the value up. And that, ladies and gentlemen, they're going to be the cards that I send in to get graded for PSA. Let me know what you think of my choices. Um, I mean, I think total, with including ORJs, if they all get 10 out of 10s, and we like literally flip every single card on eBay, it's probably like, <laughs> it's stupid. It's well over probably $10,000 worth of Pokemon cards that would be sending in at once, which is terrifying. Someone could steal $10,000 worth of Pokemon cards if they just robbed the, mail the right mailing envelope. Um, but I just wanted to film this video. I mean, it, yeah, it takes months, and I mean, serious, it takes, like, ages for PSA to grade these things. So, if you stay subscribed to the channel, I mean, you can press subscribe today, and just never watch another one of my videos until you see the results. But I will, as soon as I get these, I'm, like, opening it up and doing a video, because I'm curious as you guys. And hopefully, I mean, for me and for RJ as well, we both get 10 out of 10s across the board, all close to, 9s, 8s, totally fine. And yeah, what do you think of my selections? Hopefully you enjoyed this video, a bit more of a hardcore collector video, I know. Let me know if you like this sort of stuff, and uh, what's your favourite card that I sent off? And if you had the opportunity to send cards into PSA, what would you send in? Let me know, but most of all, we're going to keep on gaming. Alright guys, next time, I'll see you then.